Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Betrayal at Crondor. In our previous episode, we met Signor Locklear escorting a Moradel, one of the elves of the Dark Path named Gorath, southwards towards Crondor for unknown reasons. Young Owen was encouraged to travel with them for the security of their journey, and so he's found himself forced to go along on a journey southwards with a noble, a Moradel, and being dogged by assassins. The party's gone ahead and uh, taken shelter in the Dwarven Mines, the Macmordain Kadal, in order to try to find some assistance and investigate rumors of uh, a Brek Nur, a stone creature that's been terrorizing this uh, area. So let's go ahead and explore these mines and see what we can find. Maybe we can find some help or some treasure. Sparks rocketed down the corridor. Slamming Owen flat against the mineshaft walls, Locklear narrowly leapt for cover himself as something skidded along the rocky floor. Abruptly, the glowing cone of fire winked out of existence as it collided with an unseen wall. After several long heartbeats, the senior peeled himself away from the wall, just in time to meet the gaze of a short tree stump of a man. Bloody awful hammer! You best have a demon in your bones. You've come to take a whack at killing the beastie, have you not? Beastie? Beastie, aye! Half a week ago, we heard something fierce obeying in the mine, terrible cold-like. Of course, a dwarf knows the sound instant, whether he's heard it before or not. Brachnur! Curse of every old well delver since the first dwarves took up hammers. I've never heard of them. No one has in quite a while, laddie. There hasn't been a Brachnur in the upper mines for well on since DeLong the Great laid out claim to the Kingdom of the Isles. We thought we'd laid low the lot of them, but the kobolds are stirring them up on their quest. Kobolds? Your folk call them gnomes. They used to worship a dragon that would live down here. But when the dragon disappeared, they thought the dwarven folk eat him away. Every now and again, their leader Fadir takes a notion to undertake a holy quest to find him. This time they must have woke up a clutch of Brak Nur. Now the Nur have collapsed the main passage and killed thirty of our kin. We've a reward to whomever can do it in. If you're of a mind and have the spirit, that is. Let's ask him about this Brak Nur. I'm not saying we're interested in killing your Black Nur, but if we were looking for it, what would it look like? Half again, you're right, and they're made of stone like living rock they are. From out their nostrils, they breathe a green mist, but I'd be worried of getting too close to look, for they'll drop a boulder on your head, sure now. We've already had a few bravos what's come and try to hand at killing the beastie, but there's not much they've been able to do themselves beyond get themselves so mangled they needed the help of a temple. I'd be wary of them as though as I would of the beastie. They, none of them want else but to claim the gold that we've offered to the creature slayer. Okay, so there's some people wandering around these uh, caverns looking to slay the beast and looking for gold themselves, so they might be a threat. Uh, he mentioned temples. The way things have been going for us recently, perhaps we would do well to seek a little help at the temples as well. Where are the closest ones? We dwarves don't much dawdle outside the great towers or stone mountain. But as I can, there's a temple of Killian betwixt Zun and Hulk's Hollow. I think there might also be a Temple of Ishop better close, but I can't recall exactly where that would be. Let's ask him if he can help with repairing our armor. The barkeeper at the Blue Wheel at Lamut suggested you might be able to repair our armor. If we weren't digging ourselves out of this pretty mess, aye, we could do something for you. But we're all tied up to a man. Pardon my saying so, but we put problems a bit more pressing than dealing with dented armor. You might have try a hermit what lives near Oxalo. He's gained something of a reputation for himself over the past few years. Okay, so if we go to Hawk's Hollow, we should be able to find some armor repair. What about swords? If you can't repair our armor, do you at least think you could do something about our swords? I hate to be difficult, but we're really in a crucial situation. Are you deaf, laddie? I told you before we haven't the time to go repairing things at the moment. We're in a crucial situation ourselves, if you haven't noticed. We would be willing to pay you. I'm sure you would, just as sure as I know the dwarves below would be willing to pay to get out from under the rock. It's a question of time. Time. Bah! Look, if I show you a trick to sharpening your swords, will you promise not to be a bothering anybody else in the mine? I think I can turn a handful of sovereigns to advantage in Lemute and iron a few strong backs. You have my word of honor. That shall have to do. I'll teach you quick a little about weapon crafting. But I expect a fee of 50 sovereigns for my trouble. Do we have a deal? Let's go ahead and spend 50 sovereigns to learn a little bit about weapon crafting. 
Now, this is what happens, unfortunately, if you don't have enough money. Have you ever had the feeling that the gods were toying with you? You don't have the money to pay me. If you kind of spare the money, then I kind of spare the time. It's as simple as that. All right, so we won't be able to learn anything about swords, uh, sharpening our swords right now. We'll have to do that later. Goodbye. Thank you for your time, Nadir. I hope you can get things straightened out around here. We'll be fine as soon as we're through some of this rock and the Black Nur is laid low. You can't keep us down. I didn't think so. Perhaps we'll meet again. All right. Well, let's explore this cavern, and maybe we maybe we'll find the Brackner and defeat it or die horribly trying. So we're just following this path. So far, it's pretty straightforward. Oh, look. Okay, we can go left or we can go right. Let's try going right to begin with. And this looks like a dead end. All right, turn around and we'll go the other way. Okay, back at the first intersection. Now we'll go the other direction. Okay, nothing so far. Then the cavern turns left again. And I think I see a doorway ahead of us. Perfect. Let's try this door. Gareth tried the door. It's locked tight, he said. Think we should take a shot at opening it up? Let's try. Locklear frowned. I can try picking it, but I don't guarantee success by any means, he said, slipping open the patch of picklocks. The lock looks complicated. Well, we can try picking it. Locklear shook his head. The lockmaker knew what he was doing, he says. It's beyond my ability. I can't open it. Let's take a look at our people's stats here. In terms of lockpicking, Locklear has a skill of 25, Owen a measly 5%, and Gorath is only 15. So Locklear is our best lockpick. If he can't open it, then nobody can. So we're stuck for now. This key won't open this. In fact, the key is more than likely to break in the lock if I try it. I'll demonstrate that for you, though. Let's go ahead and quickly... I'm going to save our game really quickly just to demonstrate this. Let's go ahead and open up the door. Try opening it, and we'll try using the key in it. Locklear turned the key slowly. Feeling some resistance, he applied a bit more pressure, praying he had the right key, and that the mechanism inside wasn't hopelessly jam- Damn! Locklear spat. It broke, he said. We'll have to try another key, or try to pick it. <laughs> so we lost the only key we had. It's a good thing we saved there, but I wanted to demonstrate that you don't just go using a key in any possible lock. The keys, if they're not designed for the lock, they can break. Let's go ahead and restore that, and we'll continue with our journey. So unfortunately, this door is beyond our ability to open right now. We'll have to come back later. Let's go ahead and look at our map, and you can see the doors in front of us. So if we turn back around, we can continue, we can continue on our way. Now, you don't usually want to go ahead and use the map view like this. It gives you a good view of where you've been and where you're going. But if you're looking at the map like this, you might not be able to see any hazards in front of you. So now we're going this direction. We don't know what's in front of us. I wouldn't be able to see any hazards until after I've already stumbled upon them. Let's use our regular view, and I'll show you why in just a moment. All right, let's just keep following the passageway. And here's another, okay, another passage leading off. Let's try it up oh, and see there's people in front of us. If I was using the map, I would not have seen them. I would have just stumbled right into this ambush. Well, remember, if we left click, we can go ahead and attack them. They agreed to attack. Going over the plan as quickly as possible, Locklear laid out a simple strategy. We're set then, he said. Let's just hope our advantage is undetected or our advantage. Let's just hope our advance is undetected or our advantage will be lost. Let's go for it. Attack! Their opponents were surprised. The leader of the small mob screamed orders at his companions, a mix of fear and anger apparent on his voice. Seizing the first strike opportunity, Locklear barked several quick orders and the battle was joined. Alright, first things first, Owen, cast your spell. Despair thy eyes. As you may remember, this blinds the opponent temporarily, makes them unable to attack. Locklear, or at least it severely reduces their accuracy. Okay, Gorath's going to go ahead and attack this one. 
and Owen's going to use the spell again on this person. And we'll keep attacking. Now what I want to show you is, Owen had 40 and 36 stamina. He's now down to 34. Casting that spell uses up stamina. So you don't want to... you got to be careful in what you cast. It can hurt you over time. As your stamina goes down, so does your ability to attack. Um, if you notice... Let's look at Gora's stats here. 60 health, 65 stamina. And when he goes to attack, his ability to thrust, uh, his thrust attack has a 52% accuracy. If Gorath was wounded much more or had low stamina, his actual ability to attack is reduced as he's wounded. Uh, the game takes account of that, and, and as you're tired and you're unable to swing your sword as well, his accuracy would go way down. So the more hurt you are, the less able you are to fight. So you have to keep a good eye on your hit points. And that's another reason why it's good to team up on your enemies to defeat them quickly. All right, Locklear blinked. For a long moment, he stared at his dead appointment, his, his dead opponent, <laughs> pulse pounding in his veins as he waited for yet another to come on, teeth bared or blade flashing, but instinctively he knew they had won this fight. They were safe for the moment. Okay, let's search these bodies. Some more armor, but it's not very good. But there is a new sword, a mortal lamprey. As a universal weapon, the Mortal Lamprey was poor. Imperfect balance, wedded to the weapon's unwieldy weight, made it classically difficult to control in, in close quarters and challenging for the shorter-limbed Kingdom soldiers to use. As you can see, though, uh, here, here's its stats. It has a racial modifier for elves. Um, it's 3 plus your strength and accuracy of 5 plus your skill. Let's go ahead and bring it into Gorath's possession and we'll take the money. I want to compare it to the sword we have. So the Lamprey is 3 plus strength, 5 plus skill. This is 0 plus strength and 10 plus skill. So it's more accurate, but less damage. But there is a modifier that makes it better for, for elves. I think Gorath will have an advantage using that. Because he is a Mordel, of course. Let's check the other body here. It might be too far away. Let's move closer. Again, another piece of armor. Yep, not enough room for Gorath, but that's actually pretty good armor. Let's see. It's better than Gorath's current armor. Let's go ahead and give this uh, weakest armor here to Locklear. <laughs> Sorry, to Owen, I meant to say. Give this better armor to Gorath, and he'll uh, switch out. And we'll take this mortal lamprey. It's actually better than the one he's holding. Now, I'm not going to give this lamprey to Locklear, because, again, it's racially modified for, for use by an elf, and wouldn't be as effective for a human to use. Okay, so that's that should be it. Let's go ahead and go on with our quest. Let's continue on our way. So at the other side of this uh, chamber, the tunnel continues. Okay, here's a big, wide-open room with a chest. Before we go ahead and use that chest, let's go ahead and just explore the room. The room looks fairly open. Let's just go ahead and expose it all to the map here. Make sure there's nothing at the far end of it that might surprise us. No, the room looks fairly empty. I'm just going to go ahead and get the whole thing mapped here, and then let's go look at that chest. Now, as you remember, Owen has a spell that lets us uh, protect ourselves from a chest. The Scent of Sarig. Owen muttered the incantation. Knowing the effects would be invisible to all but himself, he explained as he finished the spell. Until it wears off, I'll be able to sense whether a chest has been trapped. Owen grabbed Gorath's shoulder. Startled by the sudden movement, Gorath halted and gazed up his companion. What's wrong? The chest, Owen replied. Give me a moment. Concentrating his thoughts, another scene overlaid the one already before him, different only in the fact that it included a man kneeling before the box, a skin of naphtha in his hand. It's trapped, Owen replied, dazed by the effects of the spell. Someone's ready to explode the moment the lid is lifted. Shall we try to deactivate it? 
Let's hold off for now. Okay, so this is a trap chest. I'd like to demonstrate to you what happens when we open trap chests. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and save, even though it might seem a little bit like cheating here. Opening a trap chest in this game is very bad. And let me show you why. Shall we try to deactivate it? Sure, let's see what happens. Kaboom! Something clicked, and suddenly the box detonated into flame and hurtling splinters. Owen's head swam. I don't feel well, he gasped, clasping a hand over his blood-drenched side. My wounds may be mortal. I'll need attention from a temple soon. Let's take a look at stats now. Owen has zero hit points and zero stamina. He's near death. Locklear is down to 14 hit points, and Goreth is down to 40. So now is a good time to show you some of the ways that you can heal. I'm going to restore the game and restore people back to health, but let me show you some things we have. These green things here are called restoratives. Now Locklear is in pretty good shape, so let me show you what happens when I use restoratives on him. He's down to 14 hit points, but he's not near death. So if I use the restoratives, he's gained up to 21, 27. Very rapidly, these restoratives help him out and get him, get him back into fighting shape. In Owen's case, so let's go ahead. Uh, Gorath also has 10. Let's give those to, to Owen. Let me show you what happens. When you're near death, the restoratives only do a little bit. See how they only give him a, a tiny bit of health each time. I could use all 10 restoratives, and he still only has 16 health. He's still near death. Um, he still has the near-death condition, and that means his stamina is zero. In combat, he's almost useless. Um, attacking enemies, he won't be able to hit anything. Um, when you are near death, you almost always have to go find one of the temples um, and pray to the gods and pay for a cure in order to be restored to life. It is a very bad to let yourself get into a near-death condition. So let's go ahead and restore our game here to back before we tried to open that chest. Before we did that foolish, foolish thing. And we're going to just leave that chest where it is. If Locklear couldn't even open that door, there's no way we can open a chest like that. Later in the game, when our stats are stronger, we'll be in better shape for that sort of thing. Maybe we'll come back to that chest later on in, in our lives. And I'd like to go ahead and save here. Now, now that we've had that little adventure, let's save what we've done. And we'll continue. Okay, so we're continuing on our way through these caverns. Running into random uh, people and looking for a Brachner. Oh, and it's getting darker. Our torch is running out. Okay, so let's go ahead and light another torch. There we are. We can see again. There's another chest. Owen stared at the chest. And this one's safe. Let's try to open it. Let's try picking it. And it worked! The lock was simple. As the old saying goes, locks are for children and fools, Locklear said. After a few seconds, he flipped the pick locks in the air and caught them again. I am no fool. Okay, so we got some money. Let's take that. And we will continue. Okay, to the right. The cavern continues in that direction. To the left. Oh, more enemies. Well, let's try some combat. Well, once again, we'll try to attack them head on. A group shambled towards them. Worshippers of Guiswa, the red-drawed hunter. The group moved in, disorderly in a disorderly clump, the hollows underneath their vacant eyes adorned with blood-colored swirls of pigment. Splaying a three-fingered hand, a ritual mutilation of the priestly caste, the large figure rasped, Today, Guiswa ordains that you shall be his prey. Well, that's a little terrifying. There's four of them. That one has a crossbow. And that one with the yellow pants, I'll explain why his pants are yellow in a moment. Now, here's an issue. This guy's gotten close enough to Owen that he can no longer cast a spell. He's close enough that he can interfere with my spell casting. So, Owen, try to get away from him. Locklear is going to attack him to keep him from, from menacing Owen. And Gorath's going to also attack from behind. Oh, but no, the guy's going right after Owen. 
That's what I wanted to show you. The guy with the yellow pants is a spellcaster. That's what those yellow pants signify. Alright, Owen's gonna just try to move somewhere out of range. And once again, we're gonna try to attack. Gorath can't reach any of these guys, so he's gonna attack this guy. Once again, Owen's just gonna have to keep trying to run. He's gonna move to the other side of Gorath. Who's going to keep attacking this one. Finally got a hit off on him. And he keeps casting on Locklear, making Locklear unable to fight back. Owen's going to attack the same guy as Gorath, just to try to give a little bit of help here. And he's down. Now, this one's gone ahead and changed his focus to Gorath. None of them are near Owen. Owen can now cast. Let's cast to spare the eyes. on the Spellcaster. Gorath's gonna go ahead and attack the guy who's bothering Locklear. Try to protect my friend here. And Locklear can attack again. Everybody team up as best as we can on this guy. The Spellcaster's fleeing. And he's down. Owen got the kill. All right, Locklear, you're going to go ahead and attack him. Gorath can't reach him, but Gorath might be able to start approaching the Spellcaster. Who's fleeing across around the battlefield. Locklear and Owen will work on this guy as Gorath takes on the Spellcaster. As long as I stay close enough to the Spellcaster, he won't be able to cast anymore. And he's down. Ooh, but he got a good hit off on Owen there. Gorath's going to come in and try to uh, join in with his friends here. And he's down. We won the battle. He was alive. Unsure whether it was skill or luck that had won them the fight, Locklear set aside his weapon, though he allowed his dead opponent, opponent a wide berth while he checked on Gorath's welfare. He needed no further excitement for the day. All right, let's search the bodies. There's four of them. Here's the first one. More armor, more money. Money's always wonderful. And now we're getting to the point where we're filling up our inventory. We're going to have to start deciding what we're going to keep and what we're going to discard. Pretty soon we're not going to be able to carry any more uh, equipment. Rations are always useful. Let's go ahead and share that amongst the party. And look, a crossbow. Perfect. Let's go ahead and take the crossbow, and uh, we'll go ahead and give that to... Uh, I'm not sure who's best at using it. Let's check everybody's skills with crossbows. So accuracy with crossbow, 47. Not at all. Or Owen can't even do it. And 53. Gorath's pretty good with it. At least better than Locklear, so Gorath's going to take the crossbow. And we'll also go ahead and give him the crossbow corals. Let's go ahead and take this key. We'll add it to our keychain. Gorath's pretty much out of room. Owen still has some room, so he'll take this sword and this armor. That armor is better than any that anybody else is wearing, so let's I'll give it to Owen for now, because he seems to be the most at risk. He's the weakest character. What is this? A dragon stone. As if some magic within the azure stone was awakened by Owen's touch, a dark fluid began to spill through a crack in the artifact's mottled surface and down the link of his arm. Where droplets contacted cloth, they shied, but touched to smooth metal, it infused itself and disappeared. So that's a dragon stone, something that we can use a sword on. We'll test that in a moment. More money? An herbal pack. A potent medicinal aroma wafted from the herbal pack as Gorath looked it over. Without opening it up, he was certain it contained the standard materials, alum and healer's alcohol. While it couldn't help regain lost strength, it would go a long way to increase the rate at which he healed. So if we use these healer's packs um, on somebody who doesn't have full hit points and then we rest, they will heal more rapidly. 
All right, I have no more room to pick up any more armor, so that's 60%. Let's get rid of this 38. Oh, there's not enough room. Oh, yeah, there is. Okay, so we'll take the 60. Actually, 23 is the worst that we have. Oh, no, sorry, the 18 is. Let's get rid of that. The better they are, the more they, the more they sell for. Okay, and we'll be on our way. So we still have two directions to pick from. Let's continue south and we'll see what's over here. And let's take a look at everybody's hit points actually before we do anything more. Locklear's in great shape. He's getting a little lower on stamina. Goreth's in perfect shape. And Owen again is also low on stamina. We may want to rest, rest to regain our stamina. Let's go ahead and uh, rest. If you notice though, they're not in good shape. So let's go ahead and camp until healed. Now, if I was wounded near death, like I mentioned, that would have barely healed me at all. You just simply can't heal when you're in that kind of situation. Let's go ahead and use that torch. We still have a couple more torches. I'm just keeping an eye on things here in order to get out of here. Another door. And it opens. Just want to check something here. Okay, no, this is not the same door that I was trying to go in earlier. I wonder what's in here. Just another big open room. I don't see anybody in here. Let's explore it and see if anything happens. Having found a key, I'm tempted to take it back and try to use it on that doorway that we found earlier. Well, there's nothing in this room though, so that was a, just a dead end, a waste of time. So let's continue on our way. We'll go back the way we came. And we'll go off in the other direction now. There's that chest that we opened. Another chest. Let's take a look at it. And another healer's pack. Let's take that with us. If I, I should have used that healer's pack before we went ahead and uh, rested. Okay, we have two more directions we can go. Let's head uh, back eastwards. Huh. There's quite a few different ways we can go here. Let's, let's just keep looking. And looks, oh no, it's not a dead end. It moves off this way. And then it heads back off to the west. Oh, and more enemies. Well, we were pretty successful. We have full health. There's no reason why not try to attack. The enemy was not surprised. I don't recall giving you permission to be here. A large, bull-necked man stalked towards them. His fists curled before him. Turn round. We don't want any trouble. We're simply passing through, Lockley replied. Immediately the man turned and snapped his fingers, and moments later the battle was joined. Another four enemies, one with a crossbow, but no spellcaster this time. Alright, Owen is in a bad position, so let's move off here. Locklear can attack. Now, Goreth has the ability to use a crossbow, but I think I can't when they're right up against me like this. So let's just go ahead and attack the crossbow guy to begin with. Oh wow, they're trying to team up on Owen. They know that Owen is a threat. These guys are a little bit more of a challenge than the last group we fought. But if we all work together, we should be able to uh, succeed.
we can get that one guy down. Okay, he's down. Grath's going to go ahead and take care of this one who's menacing Owen. And Locklear will start... Oh, I did not mean to do that. Locklear's going to try to start attacking that other guy. Two are down. All right. Owen's going to go ahead and withdraw here while the uh, while my people keep attacking. Notice he can't walk as far. His stamina is very low. They keep attacking. They know that they they know that they've got us. Yeah, at this point, I, I, there's barely anything I can do. I can barely move. Now let me show you what happens if I try to rest. I can gain some health back, but I'm defenseless that turn. I'm trusting on Locklear to be able to defend me here. You can gain, yeah, so you can gain hit points in combat if you rest, but it's a little dangerous. After all, there are enemies all around you trying to hit you. But now Owen is, is freed of that, so Locklear and uh, Gorath are going to finish off this last enemy here. So Locklear's in pretty good shape. Let's go ahead up here and attack. And that was the last enemy. The battle was won. Search the bodies. They may have valuable supplies, Locklear suggested. Then amend it and make it quick. If there are more of them waiting out there, let's not be here when they return. So another... Oh, our party's abilities have increased. Let's take a look. Owen's defense has increased. Gorath's now better at melee. Fantastic. Wonderful. Another chest. It has a special lock on it. Let's go ahead and... Um, I'm going to take a moment and cast Scent of Saring again. Just to be on the safe side. Oh no, okay, it's a mortal lockbox. I thought it might be a trap chest. Two legs it has, and this will confound. Only at rest do they touch the ground. Well, I know something that has two legs. And those legs only touch the ground when it's not moving. Because when it's moving, it's being balanced on the wheel in front of it. That's a wheelbarrow. Oh wow, some money? What is this? Dala tail milk. Hawked at fairs and trading meats by the Brotherhood of the Shield of Dala, Dala tail milk was really nothing more than simple spring water, albeit spring water blessed by a priest of the Defender Goddess. It was reputed to increase one's ability to defend oneself during combat. Let's give that to Owen. Ah, some rope. Well, we'll take the rope. And a ring of Prandur. On many occasions, Gorath had seen similar rings used by visiting magicians to cast spells to lighten darkened rooms. While he couldn't be certain by appearances alone the ring he held was of the same purpose, the reference to the god of light and fire in his name seemed a good indicator. So this could be useful to give us light. We're running out of room in our inventory here. And we're about to go start looking at some people here, so... I did not mean to open the chest here. I meant to, t to uh, try to get this, this body. Let's take the things that aren't going to take up any more room in, in our inventory. There's a whetstone. The whetstone allows us to sharpen our swords. I'm going to give that to Locklear. This is a clerical oilcloth. Distributed once a year from the Temple of Tith, oilcloths were often resold by the poor to any who would buy. The oil which was soaked into the fiber had numerous quantities, qualities, though it was best known for its magical effects when smeared on edged weapons or on armor. So it helps with, um, it increases abilities of swords, basically. And of course we've got more of the same things in terms of weapons and armor. So let's look at our armor and see what the worst one we have is. That's 23. 
We'll put that back on the body. We'll take the 47. We'll do the same thing with swords. Looks like that 46% sword is our worst one. We'll get rid of that, and we'll take the, the 83. That's actually better than the sword Locklear's holding. I'm going to go ahead and give him a better sword. So let's put this on the body. Uh, not enough room. There we go. Now Locklear will give his 53 to Owen. Oh, sorry. I can't disarm it. I have to put it onto him. So let's put the sword on the body. You have to give it to him. And the only way to disarm a sword is to put a new sword in its place. That's how that works. Uh, we'll go ahead and take the crossbow if there's room for it. And we'll see if we can bring the oil cloth along. Let's see if there's anything we can consolidate. I'll give all the torches to Locklear. And that way we can take the clerical oil cloth along. Okay, that's the first body, and there's three more to look at. Take another whetstone. Oh, I guess each whetstone is its own individual thing. So let's show you how a whetstone works. It has two uses left, so we'll go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and have um, him work on his weapons craft skill. We're going to try to increase it. We're going to be focusing on that skill. Use it on the sword, and it increases the sword's durability. And we'll do it again. Okay, at this point, the sword's not as bad. He really can't do any better with it. Oops, sorry. Let's see if I can put... Yeah, you can't put any more on the body before you take things off of it. It basically is full. We're, we reached a point in the game where, unfortunately, we can't um, fit anything more in our party. So I'm just going to take a look here at our inventory and see what I can do. I'll go ahead and combine the restoratives. Because we definitely want to have whetstones. Whetstones are useful. Let's give one to Gorath. And let's also try to increase his weapon crafting ability. We'll use it on his sword. That increased that to 89. Let's see if we can increase it anymore. No, that's as good as you can make it. So that's good. As for this 44% uh, sword, not, a, not any better than any of the swords we have, and a 75% armor. Let's dump this 38%, and instead we'll take the 75. I'm sorry. Yeah, you, you quickly start to reach a point in the game where you're leaving behind um, a lot a lot of stuff. Let's drop off some of these worse worse off swords here. That armor is worse than anything we're carrying. I don't think there's any more room. Yeah, we can bring that last whetstone as well. And I think there's just one body left. Ooh, 12 gold. Again, that sword is no better than anything we have. And that armor is better. So let's dump that 47% armor. And we'll take the 56. It's not much better, but I think we'll get a little bit more gold out of it that way. And that's a dead end. These guys were just trying to open this chest. That's why they were so defensive. They wanted what the, whatever treasure was inside. Well, the treasure's ours now. Since the video is getting a little long, that's where we're going to leave off for right now. In our next episode, we're going to continue our explorations of the Mac Mordain Kadal. I'll see you then.